let's do something a little bit differently. Um, yeah, let's watch this video. Good, let's go. Hello, and welcome to the Theorist Cast. Today we're building a mole teaser maker followed by a portal to the nether. Huzzah! Hooray! Just let me diggy, diggy, diggy my hole and... Oh, wait, what? What is this? No, no seriously, what, what is... Help me. Yay! It's a deadly, wedly, corpsey wopsy. What another family-friendly Minecraft mystery adventure! Here on the Theorist Cast. 30 seconds parodying one of the most successful gaming channels who still get 100,000 plus views on every video in spite of being an older group of gamers. Not your best introduction. Mind you, I'm a fan of many things you do. Though, while you are entertaining, you miss the mark. But let's move on. I'm really just nitpicking here. No, Fate, it's a funny thing. I'm sure we're all familiar with the butterfly effect. If you've ever watched any Let's Plays of Until Dawn, I'm sure you've heard about the butterfly effect over... Butterfly effect. And over... Butterfly effect. And over again. You do know you learned this in school, right? It's a very existential idea that a tiny action or event can cascade into a much greater effect over time due to the very nature of cause and effect. Oh, sorry. I'll let you finish. At its most basic, the butterfly effect is the concept that small actions can have large effects, rippling down through time to change history as we know it. No, just no. First, you cannot change history. That is impossible. The term I think you are trying to go for is change destiny, which is more accurate. Although, it's not that one event affects everything, it's that current events influence future events. Now, please get to your point. I feel like you're stalling or attempting to distract viewers from something. Actually, I'll just fast forward through to where you make your point because you obviously did a lot of research on the butterfly effect. <laughs> It's my belief that back in 2012, YouTube made a single change to their systems that went on to create a perfect storm. A set of conditions unintentionally primed to not only change the gaming videos that you and I watch, but in the process produced the single biggest game of all time. Creating a phenomenon so big and so out of control that they then tried to kill it. Loyal theorists, I present to you today how YouTube created Minecraft, how Minecraft broke YouTube, YouTube and how YouTube tried to kill Minecraft in return. Now let me tell you how hard this was to find. Back in the early days of YouTube, only the hardest of hardcore cared about subscriber rates or top lists or things like that, so a lot of that data has been lost to time. Um, no. The real reason most of that data was lost is because YouTube almost died. It started on a downward spiral because it became too expensive to maintain. Long story short, Google bought the company to keep it alive because Google video services were lacking. Much of the data in the old days was not tracked beyond view counts. Also, there aren't a lot of web historians out there tracking the rise and fall of Fred or end of the world, okay? And the websites that track this sort of thing, like VidStatsX and Tubular Labs, only have data that backs up to mid-2013. So to get all this info, I went and searched through hundreds, and I mean hundreds of old snapshots of YouTube from between the years of 2010 and 2014 using the Wayback Machine. Whoo boy, that was a weird walk down memory lane. That, coupled with a weekend spent poring over six-year-old subscriber statistics from SocialBlade.com helped me to piece together exactly exactly what happened. Now, as I've mentioned in my past videos about YouTube's algorithm, the most radical change in the site's history came back in 2012, changing from a view-based system to a system that instead favored videos that drive higher amounts of watch time. Which was a great change. Viewer retention has always been how companies who want to remain in business can get funding from advertisers. In most media, they call this the ratings, but the concept is the same. Videos that would keep people watching more videos for longer amounts of time would get more promotion than me watching you explode bananas on your face for a grand total of 30 seconds. Because you can bet I ain't watching any more than 30 seconds of that nightmare fuel. Ugh. That part of YouTube is a scary, scary place. This was all meant to ensure that good content, stuff that kept people watching, got more attention. And as you can imagine, this prompted huge changes to what got views on the website. Out went the reply girls with their clickbait thumbnails. In came the 
Vine compilations with their clickbait thumbnails. Out went the cat videos, and in came the listicles of top 10 cat videos. But those were just the intended victims of this change. There were also unexpected casualties that were caught in the crossfire. YouTube musicians and cover artists like Tyler Ward saw declines in subs per day and overall viewership. YouTube animators also took the hit as a short one or two minute long cartoon just couldn't compete in a system built to support longer video- Actually, the retention rating is based on how much of the time in the video is watched, meaning watching 30 seconds of a 30 second video got a better rating than 10 minutes of an hour long video. This benefited us animators. Back when I was animating, this took effect and I saw a huge spike in my videos showing up on searches. On a side note, this is actually what prompted me to stop as I did not like the subject matter I was animating for. Something that Rubber Ross from the Game Grumps would articulate only a few years later. Does independently produced animation have a future on YouTube? But while some genres floundered, others came out of nowhere. And YouTube wasn't ready for the ramifications of what they'd just done. In one change, one small flap of their wings, they had created a monster. A monster known as gaming. You seem to imply that gaming was new then. I'm not sure if this is on purpose, or you don't expect an older person to actually be paying any attention. But we need to move along, so please do finish that thought. Till that point, top gaming content on YouTube was mostly sketch-based, not gameplay-based. Well, that's actually because major game developers were enforcing oppressive copyright laws to remove all gameplay videos. Yes, gaming on YouTube was rare because developers didn't want the free advertising. Ironic, I know, but why are you under the misguided impression that this has anything to do with YouTube? You had Machinima from Rooster Teeth, and, well, Machinima shows like Red vs. Blue and Arby and the Chief. Freddie Wong and Corridor Digital brought games to real life with their incredible visual effects, creating monumental videos like First Person Mario, Dubstep Guns, The Last Minecart, and then there was the third category, the character-driven scripted comedy sketches, like Reckless Tortuga's Online Gamer and James Rolfe's Angry Video Game Nerd. <laughs> And the irate gamer. <laughs> uh, he was not as popular, but uh, he was there. I watched him unironically for a while. Man, I just feel the nostalgia pouring over me as I list off those names. I feel like a BuzzFeed article. Things only an online gamer from 2009 will understand. But other than those guys, honestly, that was it. Up through most of 2011, only one individual gamer was in the YouTube Top 100 channels. Adam Montoya, better known as C Nanners. And yet all of that changed in a period of five months, from April until August of 2012 after the algorithm shift, when the floodgates opened and gaming content surged onto YouTube. But before we get there, it's important to know that there was something else going on at that same time. A small indie title named Minecraft was building a fan base all of its own. Although the first Minecraft video with commentary was uploaded way back on May 21st, 2009, when the game was still a Java applet. Minecraft is still a Java applet. It didn't get written in any other languages until it was ported to the consoles, and even then only for the consoles, which happened just before the time period you are discussing now. Remember the butterfly effect? This is an example of that, but not in the manner which you are implying. All this will be clear in a moment, but finish your thought. I keep interrupting you. It wasn't until C Nanner started his Minecraft series on August 25th, 2010, that YouTube viewers really started to take notice of this game. But while Adam may have been the first, it was a different channel. One that had, up to that point, uploaded nearly 500 videos mostly of Warcraft that paved the way for this game to become a juggernaut of digital video, and encouraged a generation of young gamers to open their imagination. So much wrong here, I may need to start drinking for this. First, you imply that Minecraft is for kids. It's, it's, it's not. At its core, Minecraft is a survival game. This is important because Notch didn't even plan to keep the creative mode until after he saw how much people liked it. The second glaring problem here is that Minecraft was very popular among gamings long before it showed up on YouTube. It was just not well known to the casual gamers until it hit the consoles. Minecraft appeals to all ages. That's what made it so popular, and why it's still extremely popular. But there's an aspect you are still missing here. Minecraft is why you can now post gameplay videos of current titles at all. Finish your points, then I'll explain. 
Blue Zephos, more affectionately known as Yogg's Cast, took the open world nature of Minecraft and ran with it, creating fantastical adventures that inspired millions of viewers to pick up their shovels and diggy holes along with Honeydew and the gang. Within weeks, Blue Zephos was the fastest growing channel on YouTube. Minecraft's growth was their growth vice versa. But every game has a life cycle. After a surge resulting from September's adventure update, interest in Minecraft, at least on YouTube, was starting to show signs of stagnation. Google Trends data around that time shows that while this update caused a huge uptick in interest, the enthusiasm for it didn't maintain. Okay, if you look at all titles more than a year old, you see something very different. Titles more than a couple years old almost vanish completely. Notice that Minecraft is still hovers at the same popularity before the spike and after the spike. No, 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 you gloss over that. Consider that Minecraft is over a decade old now. It's still popular, and that retention is important to a later point. Carry on. Even in general web searches, growth had slowed. A lot. Now, to be honest, I would have loved to have analyzed sales figures here, but sadly, no amount of my trolling through the deepest of webs could yield the data that I wanted. You didn't try very hard. Minecraft is now owned by Microsoft, and those sales figures are also posted on many popular gaming sites. With the addition of Minecraft Pocket Edition, sales spiked, and Minecraft still remains in the top five in sales. Sales don't tell the whole story, though, as you don't pay every time you play the game. So the point you implied here is meaningless for a game that's been around long enough for almost everyone to have already bought it. Notch and Steam keep this stuff under super intense lock and key. Even Steam Spy couldn't help. So that's because Steam doesn't sell Minecraft. It's like you've never played the game. Minecraft has always been sold by Mojang exclusively, never on Steam. It's one of the taglines in the title of the game. Probably because Microsoft added it, as they have a very bitter feud with Steam. So I was limited to publicly facing data. Based on the Minecraft site, I do know that it had between 1 and 10 million copies sold at this time, and just over 10 million registered users. Suffice it to say, were the game to have petered out from there, Minecraft would certainly have been an indie success, but definitely not the gaming legend it is today. So what happened? What propelled Minecraft from an indie success to the second most selling game of all time? It's a great game that appeals to all audiences. That's what caused it to hit the number two spot and hold it for so long. But I'm sure you're going to try to give credit to someone else, so carry on. A loophole. And with that, we return to YouTube and its algorithm change. You see, YouTube's switch to a watch time based model yielded effects that no one saw coming. Most specifically, the overperformance of Let's Play videos. I mean, it was the perfect match. Long videos that could be produced daily and had narratives already built into the games that were being played. Stories that kept viewers wanting to binge watch. Yet every game development company had every video with gameplay from their games removed. Except Mojang. Yes, Mojang embraced this free advertising, allowing the game to be viewed by every member of their target audience. When gamers figured this out, they naturally started uploading more, just like the rush of parody videos when we first discovered that music producers could not attack us legally. Like Netflix, to see the next chapter. There was literally nothing else on YouTube with that same magic formula, and as a result, Let's Play channels dominated every inch of the website. Gamers climbed subscription charts in a matter of days. Yes, other game development companies figured out that it was free advertising. Well, well most of them did. The ones that haven't are suffering for not allowing it. I'm sorry, but... My patience for you to get to the point is running thin, so I'm going to fast forward again. And then it stopped. Practically overnight, gaming disappeared from the homepage. You Not my homepage. I still have mostly Minecraft. This is a Google algorithm that tailors your results in searches and homepages to match what you are more likely to view. Glad you understand that now. Carry on. You can pretty much break it down by month. After digging through a year's worth of screenshots, I was able to put together that May was the high point, with upwards of 14 videos on the homepage. But slowly, month by month, it started to slow. June had an average of seven to nine on the homepage. July had about five. By September, gaming was gone. No, gaming is still as strong as ever. Everyone can go to your video to watch the rest of it because this is the most important point of your video. 
Ignoring all your idiotic notions about Minecraft and your total failure in researching this topic, you made a huge error here that destroys your credibility. Twitch showed up a few years ago. Many gamers know of it now. Oddly, I only recently discovered how easy it is to use because there are Twitch apps for mobile devices. Twitch is not the only one either, but it is the one that is replacing YouTube. But why is it replacing YouTube? That's the thing you try to blame on Minecraft and by proxy you imply that it's the fault of gamers. But you are wrong. YouTube has recently made some changes in their policies. One major mistake YouTube made was with the Heroes program. In the past, YouTube was known as a free space where everyone can say and upload whatever their imaginations could create. This is no longer the case. From failed DMC policies to encouraging censorship of ideas, YouTube is losing everyone. Gamers and general masses alike do not like being told what they can say. Now YouTube is attempting to reduce what some people call bad language, which means no slang. And that is the first step to total censorship and control of content. So now YouTube is throwing the very people who made it under the bus just because they say some words that YouTube doesn't like. This is what is destroying YouTube. Gamers are flooding onto Twitch, where live streams are not censored at all, where you can say what you want and the person who produces the content decides if you get censored, not the ones providing the platform. Now, YouTube is in its own right to censor how they see fit, but it is everyone else's right to go somewhere else. YouTube is dying because gamers are taking a stance against that censorship. I do not dislike game theorists. It's not a bad channel, and most of the content is rather entertaining. But stick to your usual content and don't try to enter the political arena. You obviously do not do any real research and just wanted to blame the consumer. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed my critique of his glaring flaws in his arguments. So, have fun, play video games, and enjoy life. Until next time.